Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is a good one. So the fallout from the Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier fight number three still continues. Conor is posting up some weird, you know, pictures and clips, um, the weird tweets. I think he posted a couple of pictures now with Dustin Poirier and his daughter. I don't know what that was all about. He's speaking about how you need me. I'm the bad guy, whatever. Trying to lean into this whole devil antichrist sort of like you know um villain protagonist sort of like persona when you know deep down it's not really him it's sort of similar to the colby covington thing where colby was obviously kind of put his back was against the wall because he felt like he wasn't getting the shots or the opportunities that he needed just being a good fighter so he kind of adopted this sort of like um captain maga persona and of course it definitely ended up working for him but it, it in, the, in the process it kind of ostracized him from everybody else in terms of his fellow fighters and what not because they saw because they felt as if like he kind of started to embody that persona in real life too which is you know we could say what's right and what's wrong about that later on but it feels as if like connor is doing a little bit of revisionist um transformation now it feels like because he obviously lost in a very upsetting manner um because some people would argue i, I wouldn't personally because i'd say a fight is a fight you don't know what's gonna happen until it happens but some people have argued that because it was a 10-8 round for dustin poirier because he controlled kind of on the ground for a majority of that first round especially towards the end that it was m looking most likely that Co dustin wouldn't allow connor to just stand him up all in that all, all fight and that he was going to take him down if he did take him down there's only one winner because um connor's ground game or you know he's got his game from the from off his back is pretty crap for the most part even you know he tried to sink in that guillotine that didn't really work and a lot of people are saying that was a bit to get an error in judgment but most people are saying that you know the only outcome was that was that connor dustin was going to win if that's the case and if connor maybe deep down thinks it was the case but isn't willing to admit it maybe this explains why he's going on this weird tirade in order to kind of somehow um make it make sense in his head i think he's dropped now to seventh in the rankings as well which i think is a little bit generous still i don't think it's a top 10 guy at all i think the people underneath him would definitely beat him on their day um he's obviously still has a possibility of putting people's lights out with that left hand and spinning attacks and stuff you know he's kind of obviously an entertaining guy to watch in the octagon but this isn't necessarily a skill thing for me this is definitely more so a thing of like you know the guy's just wealthy beyond any kind of logic any kind of um any kind of manner that we're sort of used to seeing especially in ufc i think it's kind of common to see somebody as wealthy as him in boxing because you know you can make money in that um in that sport but with the ufc with dana white how he has a stranglehold on people's earning capacity capabilities there's a story recently of the ufc signing that deal with the website crypto over 150 million dollars and not a penny went to the fighters and then when dust dana white was pressed on it he said first of all that each fighter will get the opportunity to discuss their their own terms personally and kind of bring their value to the table and then see how that works which again means no one's going to get any money and then when pressing it further he basically told everyone to go fuck themselves and if you want to change stuff go set up your own organization right so he continues to be an absolute asshole to the to the fighters they don't they don't seem to have any real yearning to fix the situation by unionizing and all the people outside can complain but in general for connor he's unique he's wealthy beyond any kind of measure he doesn't need to fight again ever again he's got businesses and ventures outside of fighting that make him tons and tons of cash so i think with how unique mma is with it being a fight in the cage essentially you're able to do whatever you want and use all your all your limbs all your extremities to kind of ensure that you kill the guy that's across the cage from you or woman it just requires you to I think you require a little bit of um, hunger, like actual hunger. You require the understanding or the possibility that if you don't win this fight, that your daughter can't go to the private school that she loves anymore, that your wife can't go horse riding, that she suddenly loves again, and which has made her inadvertently love you again, that you can't, um, uh, you know, you can't put your parents in or your grandma, wherever it may be, in that really great care home that you wanted, that you can't go on this holiday. Like you need to have that little bit of hunger and drive to decide to get into a cage because everything. I've heard so far from retired MMA guys and UFC guys is that you know they all get scared before they go and fight they all get worried and they all get nervous and butterflies and some of them throw up um, in the changing room before they go out into octagon so it's nothing that really comes I wouldn't say natural to somebody right so there needs to be some sort of external Ray reason and pressure that's driving you to go into that ring and do that or the octagon and do that and now that connor doesn't have that and he has more money than god and he can do what the hell he wants and take his foot off the gas and he'd be okay 
it's difficult to muster up the motivation, the desire, the dog, the fight, whatever it may be to go into the ring and train or go into the ring and fight to death or to even train to death, whatever it may be. It's just not the same. And he doesn't realize it now. It feels like maybe he can turn it around, but so far we haven't seen it. We haven't seen him operate on the same level that uh, Floyd Mayweather does, right? Even though he's extremely wealthy, he still somehow manages to still have that same desire and drive to perform and to entertain in the octagon, in the ring, specifically when he's fighting. Anyway, Khabib had some very choice words to say about Conor McGregor, which I definitely agree with and echo, even as being a big Conor fan. Um, and definitely think he, he has a point. But in general, it's really funny to see him have this real kind of idealistic, sort of somewhat sensible view on things when in general the UFC is a mess Dana White is going to keep giving Conor fights as long as he can keep making him money you know for instance Nate Diaz is still getting fights in UFC even though he clearly is suffering from some forms of CTE right he still gets keep getting fights and even though he kind of you know is essentially a shadow of his former self so I'm sure if Conor McGregor still wants to fight he still wants to give me or not only give me he still wants to put himself on the line um Dana will still do it because he is the only person that's able to command the attention that he did the other day. Even somebody as freakishly impressive to watch as a Francis Ngannou can't command the amount of eyes and attention that Connor does when he steps into the octagon. He's just another, he's just a whole different breed in that respect. So I, I think Khabib is kind of, you know, mistake, kind of forgets that part of the industry, the kind of entertainment, Hollywood, um, get bums in seats side of things. That's basically allowing Connor to still have a career now, even though he's clearly not going to ever be champion. He's probably not going to be as active as he needs to be to be a contender to for the belt. So what's the point? But we continue. Retired, um, it says your headline retired, um, Khabib Nurmagomedov, fed up with the finish. Connor McGregor believes MMA should no longer support after loss so the following um retired ufc champion kabina magomedov does not believe conor mcgregor will ever return to the top of mixed martial arts and believes that the sport should stop supporting this former rival after saturday loss to dustin poirier um magomedov who retired from mma in 2020 defe defeated mcgregor in a title fight on october 28 the build up and the fallout of that matchup were memorably ugly mcgregor who threw a dolly at bus and magomedov was on insulted magomedov's religion wife and father after beating mcgregor and magomedov famously leapt out of the octagon to confront his entire team yeah legendary occasion right i remember watching that live like screaming you know at flipping 5 a.m in the morning um after losing to dustin poirier via tko ufc 264 on saturday during which he broke his lower left leg mcgregor insulted poirier and made threats according to magomedov the sport will pay a price if it continues to build up mcgregor who doesn't who he doesn't think will ever be successful moving forward he said money and fame show who you are magomedov told the spm all the time we hear that money and fame change people no when when money and fame come these two things show who you actually are and what was and what has mcgregor done he punched an old guy in a bar true in 2019 you guys can watch everything that he did and understand it's just like dustin said this guy is a bag of shit which is definitely true i definitely think there is that part of him in there but i somehow maybe i'm of the maybe because i'm a fan i'm kind of trying to look at it from the bright side of things i kind of feel like some of those things were him acting out because he was bored i generally do think that he didn't necessarily want to be this big mogul kind of kind of you know um don Corleone figure uh, when it comes to his brands and what he does i think in at his heart connor is still a mixed martial artist he's still a fighter that's which is probably why he ended up going into boxing he that's what he loves to do um i think anybody else that had the kind of you know aspirations to be more of a businessman and an all-round kind of you know uh, branding entertainment media figure i think they would have taken it for off the gas and pursued those other endeavors full time the fact that he's training and even trying to put himself in the octagon definitely goes to show that at the heart of it he still is mma fire which is definitely explained why when he has a lot of free time on his hands there's nothing to do because you know i'm assuming the day-to-day -day running of his brands and his businesses is done by other people and he might oversee stuff but there's a lot of time he probably just spends at home not doing much and when you got a lot of money and you're young and you're not you know you got no nothing to do in your calendar you sometimes get up to a madness which is like you know popping into a bar pub that you want to buy and punching one of the patrons because i don't know you just feel like it i think that's essentially what happened i don't think it's a reflection of what he's actually like i just think it's more so um 
a consequence of, again, of having too much money and, and loads of time on your hands. It continues. It says, I saw a lot of tweets to try to support him. How are you going to support this guy? When kids, young generation, watch him, watch this sport. If you want to promote your fight, promote. If the MMA community is going to support this bad people, this sport is going in one bad way. And that's something that I've seen that I've kind of really been, it's kind of been good to see in some respect because i think there was a period in time where a lot of people were trying to do the connor thing right when it comes to hyping fights and insulting people and being a bit of a brat but then it felt like obviously that was going a bit too far but now if and then then there's a time where people were kind of saying oh the kind of all this um uh trolling and whatnot and arguing back and forth at things and pushing people like the weigh-ins is bad for the sport but then it feels like i think a lot of people have understood there is an entertainment quasi wwe point of mma which people have kind of slowly but surely reluctantly accepted but it still feels like people are like no there has to be a line there has to be a line drawn you can promote a fight you can push people's buttons if need be but you know no families no daughters no wives nothing too below the belt but people are more open it feels like or happy to have people kind of um play the game a little bit and then when they see connor obviously going over the line they feel like he's taking a piss and they're able to call it out a little bit more objectively it feels like going for i don't know maybe it's just me in terms of commercial fighting career no matter said he does not expect his old rival to compete at the high level due to an overall lack of hunger and leg injury he says without broken legs yes he could be the same Malcolm Edo said but with broken legs he's never going to kick the same with him no you don't I don't believe it he'll return to the top Connor have good age 32 but what happened with his mind legs this guy is finished but he's good for promotion so there's an understanding in that regard that he knows that he's good for the business but that's an interesting point that he made about the leg because I think Chris Weidman, right? He's a recent one to break his leg and he's trying to make a comeback to fight again. And of course, he's had a very unlucky run prior to that with injuries, with getting knocked out in fights that he probably shouldn't be losing. And now he's in a position where people think that he should be hanging up his gloves and pursuing other things, but he's clearly trying to prove a point maybe to himself and to other people that he can come back. And again, who is is it our place to tell an athlete when they should retire? Shouldn't they have the... I always think athletes should have the... Um, should have the choice to decide when they want to go obviously the sport kind of in inadvertently decides for you but there's always especially now with the abundance of streaming platforms and people trying to make money there's always a league and a place that you can go to to fight even if you're washed up um but for the most part the sport does tell you when it's time to kind of hang it up so you're hoping that can happen you're hoping it doesn't happen because when it does happen it feels like it's a bit too late you you can one you kind of want to go out um you know with your head held up high and you kind of voluntarily put in your gloves in the middle of the octagon as opposed to somebody telling you and tapping on the shoulder and saying hey you need to call it a day but the thing about kicks is interesting because you know connor is a you know it, you, when you think of him you think of that piston of a left hand and he's spinning attacks so once you get that sort of injury similar to somebody that you know for instance for myself a little slight example i pulled my back once bending over i think i was sneezing or something stupid and ever since then it's been a sphinx that i have in the back of my head every time i'm lifting heavy right it doesn't it's not really going to affect me too deep because i mean i'm not trying to be a professional athlete or anything but it's a small thing that kind of is always in the back of my mind whenever i'm lifting bending or doing something that i kind of pulled my back really badly and i injured it so imagine what it must feel like if somebody broke your leg especially in the way that he did um trying to you know um um, win back an L that he thought he had and beat somebody that he obviously hates it must play a l real big games in your overall brain going forward so it definitely says a lot that a fellow fighter would say he's not going to be the same guy now that he's broken his leg you just don't come back and start kicking the same which is wild to think um, the continuous thing my mother my, my went to say uh, he believes the UFC will pair McGregor against Poirier or Nate Diaz when he does return. But Mad McGregor expects McGregor to lose either of those matchups. Really? He expects him to lose against Diaz? Diaz looks pretty crap, for instance. No, no offense to him, but he looks terrible now. If McGregor can't be a Diaz, then he for sure is on the Donald Cerrone kind of um, tip in it. And Donald Cerrone hasn't had as many serious injuries. He hasn't had his... Hmm probably Don Cerrone probably had more devastating kind of losses in terms of getting knocked out and stuff and getting sparked but phew, sad to see how things are rolling out for him the UFC tried to persuade him like 32 to not retire this month followed this announcement but the president Dana White ultimately accepted it in March and moved on with the 155 division Poirier expected to face Charles Oliveira for the UFC lightweight championship later this year early 2022 so yeah man a lot of people are kind of damn bad on McGregor he's not in a good spot right now we all like a redemption story. We like people to come back and sort of recover themselves and get back on the level that they were prior. But it doesn't seem like this is the case. He seems like he's on a 
my downward spiral somewhat um freaking out you know acting out being a bit of a fool it's sad to see but you know unfortunately some of these the majority of these mma greats or these mixed martial arts greats in general the story definitely doesn't always end well in it they don't usually end um with a nice cute disney ending they kind of do end in this sort of weird car crashy way or sometimes in a really depressing way right and you find out this person's lost their home but we lost their family is desolate doesn't have any friends gets getting in street fights all the time like it doesn't end well so maybe we're just seeing the other end of it when somebody's got money and it's still not ending well um in that respect but hopefully he recovers hopefully he's able to kind of bounce back because again connor is definitely one of my faves definitely somebody that definitely got me interested into watching sport in the first place but i can recognize myself even being a bit of a fan that he's definitely acting a fool and definitely doing things that we just don't expect from him and stuff and to be honest as well like i said i just don't believe this hill i don't believe this persona he's putting on deep down he's not a bad dude um he's trying to become one to kind of give himself a reason as to why he's where he's at at the moment of his career but he's definitely not him so hopefully he recovers gets back well and somehow he's able to kind of rehabilitate his image because at the end of the day we all fell in love with the happy chappy kind of determined Irish dude who was just fighting and beating up everybody right we didn't fall in love with this kind of I'm not the braggadocious thing I don't mind but this kind of this sort of like um ego obsessed um you know delusional narcissistic dude this is not the guy that we fell in love with so hopefully he can recover that old personality he had prior and just kind of adopt it now that he's rich because i don't believe he's changed with money i just feel like he's just got too much time and too much money and that's why he's acting out but again Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong.